Welcome to Talking Point here with Stephen Taylor. It's good to have you along. And today I've got one of my, well, a person that I've looked up to, a person that I've been following for uh, quite a few uh, months and a couple of years now. Somebody that plays for the Stormers, who I, you know, am a fan of. Kurt Coleman, how are you doing, buddy? Welcome good to Talking Point. Nice to be here. Thank you for coming in. So tell me about yourself, of course, for some for people that don't know. Um, where were you born? Where did you grow up? Yeah, yeah um, I'm originally from Nisna, uh, so I grew up there, went to primary school there, and then I uh, went to Cray PE in, when I was for high school for five years. And then, uh, yeah, I came to, the Cape, to Cape Town, lucky enough to be part of Western Province Institute, and then yeah, I came through the ranks there. So how did it work? I mean, did you, where did your love for sports uh, come about? I mean, obviously mm. from school level, or did you start playing sport from a young age? Tell me about your passion for, yeah, for sports. I was always an outdoor kid, I suppose. Um, always the, the naughty one in class, so I'd get rid of all of, all of that energy on the <laughs> field. Um, but yeah, I used to love cricket as well. Um, I've actually said in previous interviews, like cricket's my first love or was my first love. Um, Played up to matric. Wow. Yeah, okay. so I uh, used to love cricket. Uh, hurt my back in matric, and then, yeah, that forced me to take a, I think, a two month break, and then uh, focused on rugby and everything. And then you know, I was lucky enough to make Craven Week, and then I got scouted by Province over there. Nice, man. Uh, yeah, so. So tell me about, I mean, um, like growing up, some of the challenges, of course, you know, we went through apartheid and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Some of the challenges that you faced getting into sport. I know that we've got this whole thing about transformation yeah. now going on. Were there any challenges that you faced growing up in South Africa? No, not really. I was uh, I was born in 1990, so I was pretty. I was a peanut but just like yeah. I was still small when the whole thing was going on. And then um, I didn't really feel the effects of of apartheid. Uh, I'm actually quite lucky mm. to say that. Um, but yeah, now that the whole transformation thing's coming back, it's actually, in my view, it's a negative because um, now you don't know if you picked on merit or is because of the color of your skin. Um, at the end of the day, I think the coach should pick a team on merit uh, so you can represent your current country, knowing you're the best player in the country, in that position. Is that something that plays on your mind when you get chosen for the team? Are you there because you are yeah. of color? Are you there because you got Coleman and you've earned the right to be there? Is yeah. that something that sticks in your mind? Uh, not a province. Um, yeah, I've been lucky enough uh, to be a province now for a few years. Uh, I think it's coming up in six, seven years now. So I've never felt that I've been a quota player in, mm. in saying that uh, and uh, yeah so it's, at, it's almost like a, a family environment that province and because we're such a diverse culture uh, in Western province it's it's easier for for the guys to, to mix and, and you know you're there on merit and not because of the color of your skin. So tell me about the training schedule tell me about now obviously you've picked up this injury we'll speak about that a bit later on but tell me about your training schedule a week in the life of Kurt Coleman t tell us about how you know what yeah, you there's do there's different times in the year you have your pre-season your off-season and then obviously your in-season uh, in-season is very much different to your off-season and your pre-season uh, so in-season you'll come in at say 8 o'clock you'll do uh, a little bit of review on your team you're playing that week and then do that for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then you'll go to gym. Gym for an hour, uh, go back, take a little bit of recovery drink or whatever you need to do, or for about half an hour, 40 minutes. Then we go out to the field and train, uh, usually a split session, and, and then we'll come back, have a meeting, and then we'll have our team session. <coughs> the meeting involves strategy, of course. What yeah. you're going to do for the game. Yes, I will know. Do you watch like old games of them playing and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, that's where the analysis comes in. So, okay. uh, say we play the Bulls and we'll watch all their clips of the last three, four games. And oh, then, wow. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's part of sport nowadays. So, um, And then we'll go out on the field and train on the plans that we want to execute on the weekend. Okay, yeah. and tell me about your ambitions in rugby. Where do you see yourself like going forward? What is it your dream to play for, for the Springboks for South Africa one day? Yeah, it's always been a dream to play for the Box. Uh, I think uh, this year would have probably been the, the, the my my gap, I suppose. But in saying that, I got injured now, and everything does happen for a reason. Uh, so yeah, next year I'll take it. I'll take it full force again, and when everyone's fit and healthy, we'll have good competition in the flower stock. So tell me about some of the places that you've been to. Of course, uh, the Stormers do travel, they go different places. Tell me about some of the different places that you've been to, some of the experiences in those countries. Yeah. Yeah, I went to obviously New Zealand, Australia. 
Um, and then this year went to Argentina for the first time. How well. was that? That was amazing. <laughs> um, and you play the Jaguars, right? Which, yeah, and you beat them. Yeah, we beat them wow. in the first South African country, so that was quite nice. Um, but yeah, just their culture over there is totally different to uh, to anyone. Um, it's diffi difficult speaking, communicating with them. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, they don't speak English? No, no, that's uh, Spanish there. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been to England, uh, London, that was nice. Quite cold there, obviously. Yeah. Um, it's not always cold, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it does get warmer. <laughs> um, yeah, Australia's pretty much like South, or Sydney is pretty much like Cape Town, I'd, I'd say. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah. And how are the people? Yeah, people are very friendly in Sydney. Are they? Yeah. Um, okay. Pretty much in Australia, all over. And when you got you got to the airport, which is quite cool. Have you ever watched that show, Border Security? Yeah. Dude, <laughs> yeah, is was, it that hectic? Yes, they're they're very hectic. Uh, what did, did they search your stuff? You, know, you have to like open your bag, clean your boots before you go over. Really? Yeah, you can't bring any dirt into the country, basically. Wow. Yeah. So you had some dirty boots that you had to clean. Yeah, before <laughs> we got on on the bus, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, yeah, and then New Zealand was also nice. We got to Auckland, and there was like a. South African band playing there. It was oh, quite nice. Cool. Okay. Um, and, and the uh, foods that you've experienced? Um, yeah, no, not much difference. Like, oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, in Argentina, we had a lot of meat. Okay. Obviously, because that's the, the main food. Yeah. Uh, meat and bread. Picked up a few cages. <laughs> <over there. laughs> yeah. um, but other than that, yeah, nothing, nothing hectic. Uh, we do have like a a set menu that our condition coach sets out and sends to the hotels really? and stuff. So. Wow. Yeah. So you can only eat certain things? Uh, no, you can eat whatever you want, but okay. the main meals are, yeah. like it goes according to a diet. So. so tell me about your diet. Tell me about, like, if you pick up a few kgs, <laughs> are you fine, or how does it work? Yeah, yeah it all depends on what works for you. Um, oh. Yeah, if you like feeling light or, you know, we're big, or that's, that's what you work on in the off-season. Off mm. um, so you gym a little bit harder. Uh, for me, I like to feel light on the field, so I don't. If I get too heavy, I can feel um, a bit slow or a bit sluggish on the field. To give you that extra pace, of course. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it does the diet's a big in my in my life anyway. It's a big uh, part of my rugby career. Okay. Yeah. Now, you you got into you were given an opportunity. Of course, one of the players were in a, injured. You were given the opportunity to play for the Stormers to show like who you are, to do a bit more about. I like to give an opportunity to show people that you know you are, you have got what it takes. Mm -hmm. Then you got the injury. Tell us about that and tell us yeah. how that like knocked your confidence, man. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Rob the player got injured. Yeah, uh, unlucky for him. Um, it's part of the game as well. Uh, he'll be back after the tune test. So, good luck to him. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I got my opportunity. Started a few games. Just started playing nicely. <coughs> and then just before the Sunwood game at Newlands, um, we had training. I just ran and I stepped and I heard a pop and then I just went down. Oh man! Um, yeah, lying there was. So no one tackled you. No one. There was no contact with any other Nothing player. At all. Um, <coughs> How did you land? How does that happen? Hey? It's I a freak. Know. So that's yeah, a, that's what you call a freak injury. Yeah. yeah. So I was lying there and then the physio came to me and he did his tests and stuff. Uh, I think I was a little bit in denial. Yeah. Because uh, I still tried to run or whatever. Oh, Shabbat. Sure, yeah, I did run. It was. Oh, Shabbat. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you probably damaged it more. No, yeah? no, no. Once it's off, it's off. Oh, is um, it? Yeah. Um, so but it was hurting, of course. Yeah, it was alright. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, well, it's built rugby, so it's, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I ran, like, I think one length of 20 meters, stopped fine. Uh, but I couldn't straighten my knee, so sure. yeah. And then I went for the scan, and then I saw it's, it's yeah, ruptured. So, and then you had the operation. I had the op uh, was a success. Uh, I did about yeah four weeks ago now. So you broke what? You what? What was? I tore my ACL uh, what ligament. What is that? It's the <laughs> two <laughs> ligaments, or yeah, two or three ligaments in your knee that stabilize your knee. Okay. And that's the main ligament that keeps it uh, together. So is there still pain, discomfort when you walk? You have to be on crutches, obviously. Yeah. Um, no, the, the most pain was in the first two weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, it was a lot of pain falls then. Um, but yeah, no more pain, really. Mm. Uh, with the rehab exercise I'm doing at the moment, that's just trying to get my legs straight again. That's painful now and then, but uh, out bearable is not that bad. And the discomfort of where, like walking crutches, <laughs> have you learnt a lot about like... <laughs> no, I've been on crutches uh, actually a few times. Oh really? Uh, it's part of the game. Okay. So, yeah, I did my ankle a few years back and then 
I was on crutches for six weeks. That's your expert now. Can yeah. you give us some tips? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you have strong uh, triceps, you're fine. So, <laughs> so you, you, but you work your arms for yeah, the crutches, triceps, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, so okay. I don't know all the lingo. Yeah, man. it's <laughs> the back part of the bicep. Um, okay. Yeah, so if you have strong triceps, then you're good to go. So that obviously knocked your confidence, that obviously, obviously knocked your morale, like this, keeping your art now. Yeah, I think uh, once you over the initial shock of the injury, you come to terms with, with it pretty quickly. Uh, I think it only hit me once I was lying there ready to go into for the op. <coughs> because before that, I could still do anything. I yeah. could walk, I could try. Whatever. And you were starting to play well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I just felt, Ugh, it happens. Uh, if I'm going to be negative about it, it might keep me out longer. So. Mm. Uh, yeah, I just said to myself, it happened, I'll come back stronger next year and then we'll take it from there. And then John, John Luke took over from you, right? Yeah, yeah, John Luke took over, great guy. Yeah, um, yeah he's playing well at the moment. Mm. Um, so it shows that Stormers have got depth. Yeah, there was uh, actually some worry in the beginning of the year that yeah. uh, we have no depth and it's a young squad and all that stuff. So those are players literally coming up through the ranks? Through the ranks, same as me. Uh, Rob was at the Sharks first, um, came to Marty's. I uh, played well as a player of the tournament there. Uh, came through the ranks at Province, same as JL. Came through the ranks and yeah, now guys are playing well at uh, Stormers level. So how does it work? So obviously you have school level rugby. How do you progress into playing for Western Province and then playing for the Stormers? How does it work? Yeah, well, I was lucky enough to play Crane Week for Eastern Province and then... Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's quite, quite big. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a big stepping stone, I suppose. Mm. Uh, if you get scouted there, then you have one foot in the door. And okay. So, yeah, it's all up to you. Um, and then I went to the Western Province Institute um, when I was under 19. Played for Western Province under 19. And then, yeah, I came through the ranks uh, under 21, Warren Cup. Oh, wow. Cups, okay. Rugby, so, yeah, I did all the. the so stuff. you play for Western Province first, like Curry Cup, before you get no, chosen. No, I played for, for the Stormers before I played for Western. Oh really? Province. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this was a Stormers crisis at Flav oh, back wow. in 2011, I think, before injuries, and I was the fifth Flav. So when young. did you start playing for the Stormers? Uh, 2011. I was 21 years old. Wow. So yeah. Um, but you've played alongside some like big names in rugby. Yeah, yeah. Brian Abana was still there. Brian was there. Uh, Conrad Yankees. Yes. John De Villiers, obviously. Jacques Ferry. Mm. Conor, uh, yeah. Jean yeah Jacques Ferry was a big loss. Eh? Yeah. I don't know. Like he just disappeared. I was yeah, like. If you're and Peter Grant as well. Peter Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Came Those, with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I played Skulk, Andrew Baker. Whatever happened to Andres? Yeah, all in Japan making money. <laughs> is that where they? Is that? Yeah. Uh, but that does, does that like that must make that, that's very disheartening. Of course, we're losing our players overseas. I mean, yeah. these are big name players, and Andres was huge. Yeah. <laughs> big guy, good player. But I mean, would you ever consider something like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, at the end of the day, the rugby is a is a living. Yeah. So um, you have to make a decision in your life or in your career. Uh, so you'd literally pack up and leave? For your future, uh, yeah. Because yeah, if, you, if you're not getting maybe game time or you feel you're not getting paid enough or whatever the case, you have to make a move. Um, mm. And that's probably this, the most scary thing about rugby is you only have a job for a certain amount of years as long as your contract is. And that's true. Yeah. yeah so what is the lifespan of a rugby player? Uh, it depends on what you look after your body, I suppose. 35 uh, max, yeah, probably? But uh, That's young. Yeah, it's very young. How old are you now? I'm 26. So, so hopefully I'll be nearly another, over the hill, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I'll get another nine, ten years. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Let's hope, <laughs> eh? So you, our new Springbok coach, Alastair Kutsia, <coughs> obviously you, you played under him. Yeah. Tell us about his his technique, his style. Yeah, no, uh, Alistair's a good guy. Uh, he's, uh, he's done well at Province. He was here for nine years or eight years. Yeah. Uh, he's got a good record. Um, do you and think I it was think a surprise appointment? Or do no, you I don't think so. I think everyone knew in the country. It's probably, probably be him. Mm. Um, I think it was just if he's, he was going to turn down the job because of his deal in Japan. Deserved, do you think? But it? Do you, do you think he deserved? Yes, I think uh, he was there for the 07 World Cup. So yeah. Well, he was assistant. Yeah, he was yeah. assistant. So he knows what the bot culture is about yes. and all that stuff. And uh, he has mentioned openly that he wanted to be uh, Bach coach in the future. If the opportunity arose, yeah. If the opportunity yeah. arose. And, uh, yeah, I don't no. think he'd actually started in Japan, had he? Yeah, he'd started he had one season there already. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so lucky enough for him, he took the job and I think he'll do well. Do you think that he might get like 
him knowing you and knowing your style that that's a better opportunity of you getting into a Springbok team? I don't know. Um, I think it all depends on how you play at the moment. Uh, mm. Yeah, especially with the, the he said it's like a new style of Springbok rugby. So maybe giving yeah. younger players an opportunity. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we we can't. Uh, can't say from now because he knows people that he's going to pick them. Uh, I'd like to think that he'll pick them on form and not on on their name mm. um, or their colour or their colour of their skin. Well, yeah. sadly, yeah. he has to, unfortunately. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, that's part of his requirement, and it's mm. a sad thing, I suppose. Do you think about it, it's sad that we're now, you know, not able to possibly bid for the what is it, twenty twenty three, yeah. right? World yeah. Cup, rugby World Cup. Do you mm. think that? Um, but there must have been a lot that, that has happened before that for the minister to take such a drastic decision. Yeah, Do you think you should be rather penalizing those provinces or unions that are not doing what they're supposed to rather than penalizing the whole country? Yeah, I don't, I don't really know because if you, you know, you, you're costing your country basically because yeah. if we host the World Cup, uh, it'll it be, opens doors. Yeah, it will do yeah. wonders for our economy and all that stuff as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what actually what he's thinking at the mm. moment, uh, but yeah, we can still take it back. Uh, probably the damage is done already, I suppose. Do you uh, think we underestimated Japan in the World Cup? Do you think that we, I mean, a lot of our players were already going to Japan, so Japan were learning a lot about mm. South African rugby even before we played them. Do you think we underestimated Japan when we went in the World Cup? I don't think so. Uh, I think the, Japan just stepped up to the plate that day, um, and Eddie Jones came with a great plan. Uh, to beat the box um, and I think they were caught off guard a little bit but in saying that I still think the box would have will work good enough on the day to, to pull it through you nearly had him as a coach yeah <laughs> uh, had him for and then England came did you meet him yes I met him how is he he's a good guy uh, I was actually excited to work on him this, yeah. how he spoke about the game and how I was thinking and he knows a lot about yeah, rugby. Eh? Um, he helped England to win the um, Six, Nations. Six Nations. Yeah, straight after the horrible yeah. performance in the World Cup. So that just shows you the power that he has, yeah, the, so the vision. Yeah, mm, yeah I, I really I was excited to play under him, but uh, obviously now we have Robbie Flick, and I think he's a brilliant coach. Uh, so, so there was so Eddie Jones came and left. England came along, what paid him like some crazy amount yeah, to yeah, buy. Yeah. That basically bought him out of his contract. Yeah. Which with a round pound is okay. They paid like yeah. two rand or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, what, what, yeah. And then we had uh, Robbie Fleck, which was a surprise coach. Yeah, interim coach. Yes. Um, but I think he's done well. Yeah, he's done very well. Uh, I think his, the secret was probably uh, backing the younger players because yeah. he coached on the 21 team. Um, and he oh, so he knew the people. He yeah. knew the younger guys, yeah. and he knew us because he coached us for seven years before that. So I think everyone knew the type of guy he was and the type of coach he is, um, and how he likes to play. And he's got experience. I mean, he yeah. played. He played yeah. for the Western yeah, Province. For, yeah. for the box as well. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think everyone bought into his vision and uh, that he wants to play. And is he strict? No, no, he's, ex he's the same coach. Um, onus is on you. Um, uh, if you don't want to make it, that's, that's your thing, basically. Um, so, yeah, he gives you a lot of leeway, but in that, you have to take responsibility. So, I think that's also one of his, his secrets, I suppose. Uh, backing the players. Mm. Um, he always says it's not, it's not me, it's we. So, um, yeah, I think that's also that's a good thing for him. Okay, let's give you a scenario, Kurt. <laughs> Half time, you're losing in the change room. What does Robbie Flex say to you? Uh, first thing he says, uh, breathe, take a minute. Uh, and he says nothing, we're just quiet. Uh, we take two deep breaths, come in, relax, get your water, slow down, leg the game. He'll come in, we'll take another two deep breaths, and then we'll give his message, whatever he feels we have mm. to do. Um, yeah, obviously there's harsh words now and then. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> but depending on the game and the situation, um, yeah, I suppose that's what it is. What has been the most memorable moment in your rugby career so, so far? What do you look back on and say, or who have you maybe met or in a, a, a moment in your career that you've gone, wow, this is crazy. I never thought that this moment would happen. I think uh, probably getting my debut uh, at Newlands. Um, 
Lucky enough, we were playing against the Sharks, we were up a few points. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was 21, flipping scared. <laughs> <laughs> Probably 40,000 people in the stadium. How's that feeling when you, when you run out uh, at Newlands? That, I mean, I sit in the, in the crowd. Yeah. You being on the field, how does that, how does that affect you when, you when you're actually playing rugby? Yeah, uh, for me personally, I don't hear it uh, most times. Okay. Yeah, when you run on the field, you see everyone. And, but when that whistle blows, then it's all focus. Uh, yeah. And then downtime in the game, when the whistle blows for scrums and lineouts, then you'll have a look around and you'll actually a little absorb it a little bit. And then when the ball's in play, then you'll switch on again. Uh, but yeah, and then went on. I'll never forget this first tackle was uh, Busbach to proceed. <laughs> wow. So uh, yeah, that was quite quite fun. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, I made a conversion. Yeah, that's probably my proudest moment till then, or nice, till now. Man. And then obviously just playing, playing for Province, amazing. And obviously you've met some of the New Zealand players. Yeah, um, that's not, yeah, I met. I didn't meet Carter. He didn't play the game that we played against Crusaders. All oh, right. Played against Sunny Ball though. Uh, Still joked about it a few weeks prior to that. Like I was still playing Varun Cup, and uh, I had a joke with one of the coaches. Let me believe he was like, uh, "Yeah, don't worry, you're gonna be there in a few weeks." I'm like, "Nah, I'll never be able to tackle such yeah. <laughs> <And laughs> Two <you> weeks <laughs> later, I was standing in front of him. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was quite cool. But how does that feel? How's that feeling? I mean, were you like nervous? No, were you like yeah. well, it's just a player, right? Yeah, as a player, you you get sucked up for it, so yeah. uh, you don't really doubt yourself or because everyone backs in the team and then obviously you know who he is and what he's capable of so you try and mm. uh, stop him from doing that um, but yeah it's, it's cool met a couple of nice guys that uh, Joe Tamani is a nice guy and uh, yeah there's quite a few in New Zealand as well uh, Malika Fikatua mm. yeah, Ben Smith um, yeah uh, Lima Spuanga, very nice guy. So yeah, there's quite a few uh, guys, and yeah. So quick comment: If you weren't playing rugby, what do you think you'd be doing right oh, now? <laughs> <God, yeah. laughs> uh, yeah, did you ever? Did you study? Or? Yeah, I studied a BA course at Stellenbosch. Okay. Uh, first two years after the institute, um, but yeah, that's when the rugby picked off, and then couldn't really pursue that. So how but would you no. describe yourself for people that don't know? I mean, if you Obviously, we see you on the rugby field. How would you describe yourself? <laughs> I'm a very shy guy. Really? Uh, yeah, by nature. Um, so I won't go out of my way. Says he who drives his name on his car. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose if you get uh, a little sponsorship here, yeah. you have to take it. Uh, no, for sure. Yeah, as part of the game. Mm. But yeah, I'm, I'm not, um, I suppose I'm very humble, down to earth, I'd like to say. Um, has the fame, would you say, affected, has it changed you in any way? I'd I mean, like to say it hasn't. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I like to, to f I li like I said, I like to say it hasn't changed me as a person. How's that feeling when people recognize you? You can't go anywhere without, obviously, without people knowing, ah, oh, there's quite common. Yeah. Right? Uh, and that feeling? Do you yeah, it's a nice feeling. Um, sometimes it does get a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, when you need a little bit of alone time yeah. with your family, maybe, or yeah. your girlfriend or whatever. People wanting selfies and pictures. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, people don't really ask for autographs anymore, right? Only they? at the games. Okay. Yeah, only at the games. <laughs> Mostly selfies now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's part of the game and I love doing it. Um, so. And if you ever got to that level of playing for the Springboks, obviously things would change like yeah, tenfold. That's, yeah. yeah, that's drastic. Uh, and sevens, have you ever considered that? No. <laughs> what? Too fast for you? Yeah, no, not too <laughs> fast. Uh, I've actually got like a phobia against sevens. What? Yeah, I broke my ankle at, instead of nine. Oh, wow. Yeah, playing sevens. And I was really? Like, oh, yeah, as well. So yeah, I chopped them. More intense or what? No, it's just, uh, that's a different game. Huh? Um, so you have to be super fit. Uh, it's it's so different to 15s. You have more time to make a decision, but less time, if you know what I mean. Because mm. uh, you have so much time to think, that it's easy to make the wrong decision. That's right. Yeah. Um, and there's so much space on the field, and you're tracking your defense, uh, you're stepping, you're passing, all the little things that mm. you don't really notice in 15s, you get exposed in it at 7s. And I think that's probably the, the one difference between the 15s and the 7s code.
to somebody watching at home right now, what advice would you give to them wanting to follow in your in your path? What what would you tell them? Yeah, it's probably a cliche, uh, determination, courage, all those things. Uh, but for me, it was probably um, some coach, I, I can't remember who, told me once, if you get an opportunity, always be ready. Mm. I think it was actually Alice Tukits here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, always be ready for that opportunity, because if you do get that opportunity and you're not ready, uh, you'll seldom get it again. And I've taken that to heart since he told me that back in 2011. And I think uh, all the opportunities that I have got, I've managed to take, I'd like to say. And yeah, it's probably good at well, some of the best advice he's given me over the years. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say that for you know, anyone watching at the moment. Uh, yeah. What, what, do you, what chances do you think we have, the Stormers, of uh, winning the tournament? Yeah, at the moment we're doing well, we're sitting pretty, uh, we're on the top of our conference. Um, above the lines, by the way. Above we the are, lines, yeah. <laughs> yes. One point, I think. <laughs> uh, I think we're one point above the Bulls as well, but yeah. we've got a game in hand. Um, so yeah, we'll see how the weekend pans out. Hopefully the Bulls can take a knock. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I think we, have, we play the Sun Wolves now next week. Um, and then come back, we play the pools at Loftus. And Are I you sad you're not going? Yeah, uh, sad I'm not playing. Yeah. Uh, more than not going. Um, but yeah, it's part of the game. And you haven't even got to play them at Newlands because you yeah. ended the week before. So yeah. Yeah, it's part of it. Uh, yeah. Coach Coleman, thank you very much, man. Tommy, where can people find you online on social media? Yeah, from social media on Twitter, you can find my Kurt Coleman 10. Um, on, social, on Instagram, I'm also Kurt Coleman 10. And then on Facebook, I've got a fan page, Kurt Coleman. And uh, yeah, you guys can find me there. Do you like posting pictures and stuff? Yeah, yeah no, and then. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just keep everyone happy. Mm. Uh, try and interact with the fans. But yeah, it's, uh, it's going well at the moment. Nice, I'm in man. a good place. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes in the next couple of months, uh, see how the knee goes, and then we'll take it from there. Awesome. Kurt Coleman, thank you very much, man. Of course, we'll see you back, um, not this season, Yeah. next, next season. season. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very Thanks, much, Stephen. man. Thanks, thank you. Sir. Another episode of Talking Point with Stephen Taylor here on Dean TV. I will catch you back next week, same time, same place. Of course, don't forget to uh, interact with us on social media. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Twitter at Stephen Taylor SA. That is where you can find me on all my platforms at Stephen Taylor SA. Let me know what you think of the show. Maybe suggest, uh, you know, people that you'd like on the show, or let me know anything. Maybe you've got something happen in your community that you'd like to let us know about. Please feel free to let me know about that. Drop me those tweets, Facebook, or Instagram messages at Stephen Taylor SA. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Thank you to my production team, Bjorn, and the team right here at Dean TV. Take it easy. God bless. Bye-bye.